Okay, now I'm going to show you how to do a credit return. What you're going to do is we're going to return this trunk lid. So I'm going to tag the box. I'm going to highlight, click on, left mouse click, and drag and drop the part to credit return. Now, you have an opportunity to return only, return and reorder, receive credit, or cancel. In this case, I'm going to return and I'm going to reorder the part. So it asks me, do you want to return and reorder? Yes. Now, this box is going to come up and ask you why are we returning the part. So I'm going to return it because it's a damaged part. If the part has been picked up from your location and taken back with the vendor, you're going to put a check mark in the box that says the part has been picked up. In this case, I'm going to deselect because the part is still here. I'm going to go to save, and it's going to return and reorder. As you can see, I have a trunk lid returned. The part is still on my property, and at this time, I've reordered, and now I have it a status is on order. Now, if the part is picked up later, you will check mark the box so you can show that it has been returned. If it's been returned, I'm going to show you how to relieve it from your statement. You're going to put a check mark in the box. You're going to drag and drop it back up to credit return. Now at this time, I'm going to receive the credit from the vendor. So I'm going to hit OK, and this is going to give me my credit. I can scan the credit return in, so it will appear in the Media tab under Scan Documents, in this case, I'm going to now hit save. Okay, we're going to go ahead and receive parts in Summit. So what I like to do is, again, I like to go up and I like to select new parts, and it'll give me a list of just the new parts. So now I have a list of just the new parts. What I like to go ahead and do is I'm going to right-click and show part tag totals. So let me go ahead and give you an idea what the part tag totals are. Any parts that I tag will show up as a cost and a list price of each part. As I tag the next part, I can go up and I can validate that the cost and list is correct. So I'm going to go ahead and tag all of the parts and make sure that it matches what my invoice says from the vendor. In this case, if it's not correct, I will go in and I can adjust the list price by highlighting in the box. And at this time, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change the cost. So I've changed the cost by typing the figure in, and I can go up and I can change, I can calculate. Now it matches what my cost is. But in this case, I want to go ahead and change the list price. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to type in the correct list price. Now, once I do that and click out of the box, you can see that the list price has changed and it's turned green in the adjusted list. This will give an indication on the line items to the estimator that there's been a change on the list price. This will give him an opportunity to go ahead prior to closing the repair order to go to change the part price on his estimate and resynchronize the change estimate in the estimating system to reflect the actual true list price that we should be charging for the part. Now I have all the parts tagged that I have on order. I'm going to grab one, left click with the mouse, hold down, and I'm going to drop to receive. Now, once the receive comes up, you're going to see a box that's going to give you direction. One, I need the invoice number in the invoice field here that matches the invoice from the vendor. And you see the calculated cost at the bottom? That should match the invoice that we have in our hand from the vendor. At that time, I'm going to put the amount in, and that amount is 738 $12. Now, I can scan, at this time, the invoice in so that it will drop into the medium 
so we will have the, the information in understand documents. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit OK after the scanning, and I'm going to receive the parts. As you can see, the reparts come up in green, and it will show all of the received parts, the date, and the vendor information. Now we have one part that's still on order from an aftermarket source, and when that invoice comes in with the parts, I can go ahead and receive my aftermarket parts at that time. This should conclude the parts order. Okay, we're going to go over uh, ordering parts in Summit. The first thing we're going to do in the uh, parts tab is where you're going to order your parts. And what I like to do is I'll go up and I'll sort just the new parts. So this gives us just an opportunity to see just the new parts. Uh, at that time, you can hit tag and tag all parts or you can go down and tag the selected parts that you're going to order from the vendor. So at that time, you're going to grab one and drag and drop by holding the mouse, left mouse button down and drop the parts on order. We'll drag and drop. Now, the box comes up and it asks you what vendor are you going to order from. In this case, we're going to order from Lamb Chevrolet. The date is always going to default to the date that you're ordering the parts. Now, it will default to the date within 24 hours receiving. If you're not going to receive the parts in 24 hours, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to highlight the date that we wanted to come in we can go ahead and set the priority. In this case, we're going to leave it as low. You can put a note in for the parts person that's going to receive the parts order, and in this case, we'll go ahead and ask if they can price match. By having the check mark in the box here, uh, where you see print, it's going to go ahead and bring the next screen up. Now I'm going to hit OK and here's your parts order. If the parts order doesn't come up, you would highlight the box and run report. You can fax, email, print, or turn it into a PDF so that you can attach it to an email. At this time, I'm going to go ahead and print. I can close the box. Now I've printed a parts order and as you can see, I have the parts on order. Now, if I want to go ahead and do aftermarket parts, I can do the same thing. Select the aftermarket, tag, drag, and drop. Now I can order those parts from another vendor. Same procedure, hit OK, and 